Now, switching gears, everyone, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp has signed a law that will overhaul the state's voting system. The law includes new restrictions on voting by mail and even more legislative control over how those elections take place. Now, uh, Democrats and voting rights groups are arguing that this law is going to disenfranchise voters of color. I'm joined now by Georgia Democratic Congresswoman Nakima Williams. Uh, Representative, always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to talk first about what happened after this law was passed, and this involves State Representative Park Cannon. Uh, this video is just, it's really harrowing to watch of her going and knocking on Brian Kemp's door as essentially he is signing this law into, uh, into uh, this bill into law. What was your reaction when you saw this? I, I saw the video and I couldn't be, she was charged with a felony baker, a felony for knocking on a door. She's a sitting state legislator who knocked on the governor's door as he behind closed doors with six white men standing around him signed this voter suppression bill into law and representative Cannon knocked on the door and she was arrested and charged with a felony. If this does not take you back to the mindset of the 1950s and 60s in the Deep South and Jim Crow, then I don't know what does. Literally, we are still fighting for voting rights in 2021. It's unreal. Yeah, it's beyond unreal. And by the way, you have experienced this as well. In 2018, you too were arrested at the state capitol. You too were escorted in handcuffs. What was it like to see this play out all over again? I mean, it, her being a young black woman serving in this body is the constant reminder that we're operating in a system that was not designed by or for people who look like us. But it's because of leaders like Park Cannon, like Stacey Abrams, and like our advocacy groups with Black Voters Matter and Latasha Brown and Nse Ufat, we are making this system work for all of us. And that is what scares so many people away. We played by their rules and we won. And now they want to change the rules, but we're not going to go away quietly. So let's talk about the rules that were changed here. I mean, these new stringent voting laws passed by Georgia Republicans, by the way, Democrats had no input in this whatsoever. It includes less drop boxes, stricter voter ID laws. And this is even the weirder part, the inability to give food and water to voters who are just waiting in line. What do Democrats do here to really combat this? What is basically on the table to stop this? I mean, just think about it, Baker, your cup of coffee right there. I could have bring you a cup of coffee nope. to help you to stay in line because they're already creating a process that's going to have more people voting in person and longer lines. But now in the dead heat of a Georgia summer, we can't give someone a bottle of water to keep them hydrated. How cool is that? And I just what we're going to do is we're going to keep bringing it to the people and making sure that people here in the state understand what is actually going on. When voters showed up in November of 2020, when they showed up on January 5th to elect John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock, that was only the beginning. We are not going away quietly. We have statewide elections coming up in 2022. And I'll tell Brian Kemp, change the rules or not, we'll figure out how to win by these rules as well. But we're also going to push in Congress to make sure that HR1 is passed so that everybody in this country, regardless of they, where they live, have the same access to the ballot box. Yeah, let's talk about HR1 here for a moment, because obviously Joe Biden kind of made some news yesterday, opening the door a little bit to potential filibuster reform or change here. Uh, but obviously to get this done, the Democrats are going to have to nuke the filibuster here. Are you confident that the Senate will be able to pass HR1 here? Baker, this is our civil rights moment. Anyone who wondered what would they have done during the civil rights movement, now is your time to find out. We should not allow a procedural maneuver to prevent us from giving everyone in this country free and fair access to the ballot. This is something I hold the seat that was once held by Congressman John Lewis. So this is very near and dear to my heart and near and dear to my district. We are literally still fighting for what he was beaten over on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. So we have an obligation to make sure that this bill passes. I wanna talk also about the, the shootings that happened in Atlanta. Obviously your district encompasses most of, of, the, of the greater Atlanta area as well. Uh, I'm from just outside Boulder, Colorado, so it has been a traumatic week for both you and for me and everybody else in those areas. What kind of action do you think will possibly happen regarding gun violence in this country based on the fact that 17 people lost their lives over the course of the last two weeks? 
So the good thing, Baker, is the American people are on our side. The country is on our side of common sense gun control. We, in the House, we've already passed revisions to our background check laws to close the Charleston loophole to make sure that we are really doing background checks before people buy guns and it now sits in the Senate but it all goes back to the filibuster and I will say to anyone we have an obligation all of us have a role to play in stopping mass shootings in this country and so any senator who is willing to allow a procedural move to prevent us from moving forward with common sense gun control shame on them uh, i have about another minute left with you representative you're also part of the congressional asian pacific american caucus as well that uh, how is that body essentially responding to the horrific rise in hate crimes we've been seeing against our asian and pacific islander friends here so just this week, we had a hearing on the House floor that was already scheduled before the shootings in Atlanta, um, addressing the rise in Asian hate in this country. And we saw that being uplifted with our last president and the rhetoric that he used around the coronavirus. And this weekend, we have a group, a delegation of members of Congress from the Congressional Asian Pacific Islander Caucus coming down to Atlanta to do a tribute to the, the lives that were lost, eight people murdered six Asian women murdered right here in Atlanta just because of who they were. And so we're I'm, we're gonna be greeting that delegation that is coming down and we're gonna go in and pay our respects at the sites where the victims were lost. All right, Georgia Democratic Congresswoman Nakima Williams, uh, such a pleasure to have you here. Have a great weekend.